Hi, Lou Morelli, one of the pantomaniacs. Louie, I love you. How are you, Bob? Bob? How's you doing, all right? Pretty good, babe. Atta boy. I figured I'd call and take some of the edge off your anger because I go back with you in the 50s and 60s when we spent time at the famous cafeteria talking about nothing else but family, mm -hmm. obligation, and our concern. And Jackie and I used to work on weekends. You worked six, six seven days a week in order to take care of your family. And I remember the day that things sort of fell apart for you with your first marriage and you were concerned about what was going to happen to her and your family and everything else. You were the one guy that was so family-oriented in show business that I could still hear the words of uh, all of us sitting around the, the cafeteria and, and just talking about nothing else but things that we wanted to do for our families. Well, that's very difficult. You know, uh, you, you know uh, you, you're a friend of mine, and I can understand you understanding me. But what kills me all together is when your own family don't understand what you're trying to do. I mean, to put a block around you of, of evil is so, you know, so, it's so wrong because uh, I'm married to my present wife 27 years. I got a 19-year-old daughter. I mean, uh, I don't think I would have lasted 27, 27 years uh, with anyone if I was so bad the way they, uh, they, 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 they paint pictures. I'm a decent human being. I make mistakes. We all make mistakes. I'm not, you know, I'm not perfect. But don't crucify me and tell everybody I'm a bum or my wife's a whore or my daughter is another world bums. What is this nonsense? I had enough of this nonsense. Now they're going to have to answer me why. Now they, they blew, they, you know, they blew it. If they would have shut their mouth and said, we want to be bothered with them, I don't want to be bothered with them, fine. But now they blew it. Because they're not going to call me a bum and then two minutes later say, I'm his sister and I'm his brother or I'm his, I'm his uncle, I'm his aunt, and sign autographs. I love that nonsense. That's the sickness of these people. But they're going to know about it. I want the world to know what kind of strachadas they are. And they're going to know, boy. They're going to know. Thank you, Lou. Thank you, Thank you Louie. Uh, Rose, hello. Oh, Pat, take it easy. Take it easy. I, <laughs> I have a family very similar to yours. It'll never go back to where it was. We yeah. have the same kind of problems. Mm -hmm. It never goes back because there wasn't anything there to begin with. Yeah. You have more family with outsiders, your, you know, your coworkers, your, your family. Yeah, you got a good point there. You're right, Rose. You got a good point. Absolutely. And your family was never normal to begin with. Probably. So it was mine. Mm -hmm. And it, it can never be the all-American family or the Italian family where they all sat around. This is a disgrace. What are you going to do when they're like that? Well, I, again, I'm not looking to have any relationship with these people. I'm going to stop them once and for all that they're going to go to bed at night. They're going to say, I made a big mistake. I called this guy a bum. I called his wife a whore. I, I, I made a big mistake. And they're going to apologize to me or I'm going to go with a bullhorn in front of their house and I'm going to get arrested. <laughs> but they're going to arrest me every but, day until Pat, I get an answer. But, Pat, what, what, what is it going to do to you? It's going to make me feel good. I don't know. I don't know. It, you're very emotional. Right now you're very, Well, that, that, there's nothing wrong with being I mean, emotional, honey. I'm a performer. I get on a stage. I'm emotional when I get on a stage. Yes. Now, when they yes. tell me the reason you made the money you got in your pocket is because you mentioned us. Yeah. I said, wait, what happened to talent? Yes. My mother believes that what I say about her on the stage is her. My mother wasn't born in Naples. My mother doesn't speak with an accent. I speak about a woman that's not my mother. Because if I had to speak about my mother on my act, the people wouldn't laugh no more. Yeah. They'd get sick. Because they're all money-hungry people. That's all they think is hard, D. A lot of it is jealousy. <clears throat> well, that's their problem. That's right. If you're that's jealous right. of me, keep it to yourself, but don't knock me, right. don't knock me behind my back. I go to a nightclub, I'm working, somebody comes up, I met your mother, she goes, yeah, yeah, that's my son. And then in 10 minutes later, she's saying, well, you know, uh, he's not such a nice guy, he don't come to see his mother. What am I going to see my mother? Where were they Christmases? Four years in a row, in an $8 a week room. Huh? But I didn't cry. Easy, and we're all I didn't cry, senora, I didn't cry. No. I kept my mouth shut. I went about yeah. my business because I can handle loneliness. You know why? Because all my life with them, they made you lonely. That's true. That's what That's they true. did. true. And I beat them with my loneliness. I beat them. Now, they're going to be lonely this Christmas when I get through with them. Good okay, luck. Rose. Thank you, Rosie. Good luck to Happy you. Happy holidays. Right, WABC, it's uh, eight minutes before five o'clock. Why? Well, let's get back to uh, the very uh, disturbed. Uh, disturbed. Pat Cooper. Angry. Angry. Angry at those people, absolutely. Gary, you're at WABC. Go ahead, please. Well, thank you. Uh, first, I want to say that uh, Norwalk, Connecticut is wall-to-wall -wall Bob Grant country, and we also love Pat Cooper. I'll be there in the future. <laughs> I'll be there at the Continental Continental Manor. When are you going to be there? The 17th and 18th of January. I'm going to be there. And on my way to Westport, that's where my two sisters live. I'm bringing my bullhorn. All right. Now, listen, I got a remedy. I've been listening to you for many years. Uh -huh. Pat, you brought many, much joy to my house. Thank you. I, I, I sit here with tears in my eyes because... Don't cry for well, me, please, don't. Let me tell you why. Mm -hmm. My father with his brothers went through this for 20 years. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you the remedy that, that, that solved this whole problem. And you know, he's still not buddy-buddy with them. He doesn't talk to them. 
but the same Jesus that you talk about, the same God that you talk about in, in, your, in the closet or in the dark when you talk to that God, that same God says that when you come to me in, in, in your prayer time to ask me for things, you must come to me first having forgiven those who have hurt you, who have mm -hmm. trespassed against you. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I know, I, because I've experienced it, but Pat, I can tell you that I, I sense such a tremendous hurt inside you, and, and you are a good man, and, and everyone who's ever talked about you has always smiled when they mentioned your name. But I'll tell you something, until you could ask God in the quietness of your own room to help you forgive these people for what they've done, and ask God seriously, to, to help you forgive them. It doesn't mean that you're gonna, everything's going to be back the way it was before this all happened. But I'll tell you what, the hurt, the bitterness, the anger, the frustration will go. And you could get on with your life because you made peace. You said that you're 60 years old and that soon you're going to be with your creator. Well, that same creator... Oh, he's not going to be with his creator for about 25, 30 years. Come on. Well, no, you know what I'm saying. This guy's, uh, you know, with a half part Asian, half Navidad, <laughs> and he <laughs> lasts long. <laughs> Uh, well, the last time I saw him in New York, he looked real good. He looked I appreciate great. you. You're Listen, a nice man. Thank you, my Pat, friend. I just want to. I understand you. what you're saying. I love you, and I thank you for for, for being concerned. And and you're going to be on my prayers. Ah, uh, you're a nice. God man. bless thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, bye bye. Uh, Gary's a good person, and uh, here's Harvey. Hello, Harvey. Hey, Bob. How you doing? Uh, hi, hi, Pat. How Hello, are you? Harvey. How are you? Very good, thanks. Boy, what a pleasure it is to talk to you. Thank I you. tell you something. Uh, I mean, I'm as manly as they come, but I love you. I really do. I thank love you, you. Uh, Bob. <laughs> to you, Bob. I don't like you too much, Bob. Uh, but to you, uh, you know, Pat, I think you're Mr. Wonderful. Thank you. I, I have, uh, I'll tell you something. I've heard you on the Howard Stern show, and, and that's the reason why Bob's shaking his head right now. I can I'm see not it. shaking. Yeah, I'm not, you're shivering in your no, boots. No, I'm not shaking my head at all, pal, not at all. Uh, but uh, you're uh, deep six because any minute uh, is going to be a no-no type language. You can smell these guys uh, coming along. You know what I mean, You want to know because I'm not in this business. You know better. Yeah, you can tell when uh, right. <laughs> when they're going to come up with a no-no. <laughs> Let's try Robert. Hello, Robert. Hey, Pat Cooper, listen to me. It is written, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world if he loses his own soul? When you said to your, that your mother was just a lady, you lost it, buddy. Your act is finished. You should only drop dead. Okay. There you go. Now, why do you guys get mad at you? I don't know. What are you asking? These guys here you're going to ask these guys for. They can't handle it. See, nobody, you know what it is? A lot of them think of what I say, but they can never say it. They ain't got the courage. Let's try Bill. Hello, Bill. Yes, Pat. Yeah, Bill. Uh, Vincent Gardenia, if there ever is a Pat Cooper story, do you agree with me? Vincent Gardenia should play you? Play me? I'm old. Vincent Gardenia's a little older than I. I don't know if he can play me, he, but he's oh, well, a great guy. He looks and talks yeah, exactly yeah, like you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I love him. He's a good friend, and I love him dearly. He's a great actor. He's a, he's a gentleman. Okay, uh, that's for sure. Let's try Frank. Hello, Frank. Hello, Bob. Pat. Frank. Yeah, listen, I yeah. don't know if you remember, but about eight years ago, I guess, we met at, uh, I don't know if I should mention it, but it was the track. What's wrong with the track? Well, no, I'm nothing wrong with it. No. Uh, and you were with your uh, agent at that time and his mother-in-law. Mm-hmm. And uh, you called me Cheech. Yep. It was like we were long lost buddies. We became friendly for that day and the following Sunday. Okay. But I got I got to tell uh, Bob, Bob. Yeah. What what this man is, his character. Uh, an incident happened. People were looking at him. They were looking at his shoes and this and that. He says, "Hey, Cheech." He called me Cheech. He says, "Look at these people. They're looking at my shoes." He says, "I got fourteen dollar Tommy cans on." He says, "They they're the best shoes I ever wore." <laughs> but let me tell you a story. He says, now watch how people are. He walks to the window. What's a $10 window? We're not going to get this story in. Yeah, all right. Well, anyway, listen to this. He walks to the window. He says, watch how stupid people are. And now he goes, give me $10,000 on the four horse. <laughs> the crowd. And they all bet the four horse. Right? He wasn't okay. Here. Thank you. That's funny, Cheech. <laughs> hey, Pat, listen. Thank when you. you go out there with that bullhorn, let us know, will you? Okay. Okay. Pat Cooper, ladies and Thank gentlemen. You. One of a kind. It's five o'clock, Gracie.